I just wanted to say there's a miracle here today. We have never started early on anything <laughs> since I've been here. According to my watch, we got two minutes. So we are thankful that you are here today as we celebrate the life of Tom Glenn, a true champion of the cause and a person that has meant so much to those of us here at Chapelwood. My only regret was I didn't have long enough to get to know him. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you too also shall live. Let us pray. <coughs> Gracious God, we are thankful for this day. And in particular, we are here to praise, praise you, Lord, and to witness to our faith as we honor the life of Thomas Latimer Glenn Sr. We come together in our grief acknowledging our own loss. God grant us grace that in pain we will find comfort and sorrow hope and in death resurrection. Before you our hearts are open and from you there are no secrets hidden. We thank you for the great company of saints that have gone before and especially on this day for Tom to his family, and to his friends, grant your peace. And help us to believe that that we have not even seen. Strengthen us, encourage us, and hold us fast in the days and the weeks ahead. We pray all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like to share some scripture with you today from John chapter 14. These are words of Jesus to encourage us. Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. For in my Father's house there is plenty of room. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will take you with me, so that wherever I am, you will be also. And you know the way to the place to where I'm going. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Now I've said these things to you while I'm still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. We invite you to join us on our first hymn, which is I'll Fly Away. It's on the back of your bulletin. And if I know anything, I know that this is one of those songs that's supposed to be upbeat and exciting. So make it count, y'all.
23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, it is you whom we come from and to whom our spirits return. You've been our dwelling place in all generations. You are our refuge and strength. You're our help in times of trouble. In this hour, Lord, we ask you to grant us your blessing. Help us to put our trust in you. Calm our spirits and comfort our hearts. Lift our eyes beyond the shadows of this earth and help us to see the light of eternity so that we may find grace and strength in this and every time of need. And as your beloved children hear us, as together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Rise, you're evil. I'm going to sing 77, How Great Thou Art.
It is a great honor and privilege to be invited by the family here this day to, to come and share a few words with you. It's good to see so many familiar faces, faces that Sharon and I have missed for a long time. It's good to be with you. I'd like to begin by sharing another word of scripture from the Psalms. I think it's one that speaks well of Tom and the way that he tried to live his life before his family. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all day long. Though their number is past my knowledge, I will come praising the mighty deeds of the Lord God. I will praise your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds, so even to old age and gray hairs. O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to all the generations to come. Your power and your righteousness, O oh God, they reach the high heavens, you have done great things, O Lord. Who is like you? Getting to know Tom was, was quite a joyous experience. I, I don't even think I've told Evelyn how I first met Tom. I uh, had just arrived here, just a new pastor. We came in on a Thursday. We spent Friday trying to find things in boxes. And so Saturday, I uh, came down here to the church just to kind of get a feel for the place, walk around a little bit, and, and maybe get an idea of what the congregation might be like. And I walked into the hallway where the office is. There was a bulletin board there, which is still there. And on it were a bunch of pictures of some of the strangest looking women I had ever seen. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure what to think about that until I noticed some of them had mustaches and beards and then that felt better, I think. At any rate, I read some of the names under there, and one of them was Tom Glenn. I looked at his picture. I thought, this is going to be an interesting person. <laughs> I spoke to Tom sometime later about that picture, and he says, yeah, I know. It wasn't a very good picture. He said, uh, I think I had the wrong color evening gown on. <laughs> A couple of years later, they did another womanless wedding, and Tom was in that as well. He wore a different color evening gown. Afterwards, I told Tom, I said, it wasn't the color. <laughs> I loved teasing with Tom. He was a good person to, to just have a good joke with tell a good story. He was the kind of person that you like to be around. And we had a, a hurricane that hit the Pensacola area, Hurricane Ivan. I announced that Sunday that I had talked to the Red Cross. They needed diapers and water. And this congregation came together and went to the 
the ceiling in the fellowship hall with water and, and diapers. We loaded up the, the church van as full as we could possibly get it. And Tom and Bob Young and myself drove down, which turned out to be quite an adventurous drive at that point, to get down to Gulfport, Mississippi. Now, Tom had just purchased a new item. He loved toys, and, and he had just purchased a new item. It was called a GPS. <laughs> now, this was not common you know, for most people, and this was a brand new item. And so anyway, he says, let's take this along. And I was glad we did, because when we got down there, if it hadn't been for the GPS, we would have never found anything because all of the street signs were gone. Oh, everything was a mess. And we had to take so many different back roads and side roads and everything. It, it, the GPS was a great thing, but that wasn't the important thing about it. As we were driving down, the lady's voice came on, turn right and such and such. In a half a mile, turn left. Bob Young was sitting next to me, and Tom was right behind us. Bob just kind of looked at the thing, and he finally couldn't stand it anymore, and he said, where is that lady? <laughs> Without missing a beat, Tom says, oh, she's up on a satellite. <laughs> Bob didn't say a thing. <laughs> we continued on about another hundred miles. She spoke a few more times to us and Bob couldn't stand it and he said, how can she see where we're at? <laughs> Tom says, she's got binoculars. <laughs> Now, at this point, I decided what my job was in this whole thing was to keep a straight face and not run off the road. <laughs> anyway, we got to our destination. We got out all the stuff delivered, unloaded, and we were headed back. And it was, it was evening, and we were going to be staying with some folks in uh, Pensacola. It was dark. And the lady came back on. And she said, turn left at such and such road. Bob turned around to Tom and says, how can she see us in the dark? <laughs> Tom said, night goggles. <laughs> Tom loved pulling your leg if he could do it. He truly did. He, uh, he just had a way of caring for people, loving people, and having a good time with people. I know we, uh, every once in a while, would go over to the country club. He knew I loved playing golf. And uh, so I would get to play over on the country club course. And that, of course, was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. Tom enjoyed helping people, sharing people, uh, and sharing good times with people. When, uh, when I was assigned a job here for the annual conference, I introduced Tom to the dark side of Methodism. <laughs> Annual conference itself is not the dark side of Methodism. But my job was parking. <laughs> now, Methodists are very loving, caring people until it comes to getting a parking space. <laughs> then all bets are off. And Tom wanted to help out, so I, I had Tom help me with the parking situation. 
And uh, I assigned him, you know, one of the easier jobs. On Wednesday, all the retirees would usually come in for annual conference, and they had spaces all set up for the retirees that were close to doors and close to getting into the into the center. Uh, Tom came to me after the crowd had finally gotten parked, and he said, I is it okay to carry a baseball bat? <laughs> It had not been a fun experience for him. But I guess it took to him because even after I left, he continued to, to work in making sure people were getting parked and making sure people had a good time at the annual conference. Tom was the kind of person he loved to be around, to know, because he did love people, and he cared about it. Tom was a good friend. Every year at annual conference, I made it a point to catch up with Tom. A few other folks that I knew would be there at annual conference. But I especially wanted to know how he was doing. When this COVID thing came along and we stopped having any <coughs> conference in, in person, I lost touch with Tom and I didn't realize he had gotten into the condition that he had or I would have been over here by his side. was a wonderful son, a wonderful father, a wonderful husband, a wonderful grandfather, and great-grandfather. And his family was the most precious thing he had in this world. And they knew it. He also loved his church family. And I know that's why you're here today. Because you felt that same kind of love and care that I enjoyed while I was here. And we could, we could be satisfied with just our memories of how we enjoyed him and how caring he was. But that's not why we are here today celebrating. Seems like a strange word, I know, at a time like this. When our hearts are heavy, we feel the loss. But we are celebrating this day. Because Tom knew in his heart of hearts the promise that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ made to all of us. Believe in me and you will know. In the reading from John, it reminds us, Jesus told his followers, he said, I... I'm going to prepare a place for you, a place for you, and then I will come, and I will bring you to it, that you may be with me. And that's exactly what Tom experienced. A few days ago, he got the fulfillment of that promise that he lived with for so many years. Christ prepared a place for him and then he came and brought him to himself. I know for us 
we are happy and we give thanks. But it is also a loss. I wish I could have a few more jokes with Tom. Wish I could take a few more trips with him. Wish we could work together on some of those disaster projects that we went to. I wish all of those things were possible. But one thing is possible. I can see him again. planning on seeing him again in that great reunion when we all in our own time find our way when Christ prepares that place for us and comes to get us and says come into my father's kingdom blessed child Tom heard those words, I'm sure. And we can too. If we carry that promise in our hearts as he did. If Tom had anything to say to us today, he would want us to know. Not just hear, not just say, well, yeah, I've, I've heard that, I've read that. So, no, he would want us to say, in my heart of hearts, I know. I know. Not only have my sins been forgiven, but God's love and mercy is preparing a place for me. And he will come. I am so thankful. so thankful for his presence in my life. And there are a lot of stories that I could have told, but probably best not. I, I, I just couldn't share his remedy for keeping beer away from his flowers. <laughs> I think you all know that. And a very dear friend. Let us pray. Eternal God, we do praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. And especially this day, we praise you for Tom Glenn, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these grant your peace. Let your perpetual light shine upon them. And help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home. Not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. we are going to have a time of remembrance and so Cindy is going to start off with us uh, sharing some insights from the family and then after Cindy if you would like to come up and say something you got to come up here you can't do it from out there but the family will be would love to hear anything you'd like to share
beautiful moment. The, the Army did a presentation of the flag for my father because he served in Korea. And a live bugle player played taps. And because Kathy wanted to make sure somebody would get up here and speak, I volunteered. So all my brothers spoke today. So if you're wondering why they don't get up and speak, well, maybe one of them, but they will. I also wanted to point out the portrait of my dad right here. And I don't know if you can see it. It was out in the lobby earlier. Um, this is a portrait that my cousin Claudia and Dave, their mom, Mary Paul, Glenn, Bassey, she painted when my dad was 15 years old. And the significance of this is that it was always on in my house in the hallway and we all adore it. But what we found when we were looking for a brochure picture of dad is we had gorgeous pictures of dad from high school and college and military, but there were no pictures of him by himself anytime after. For the next 60 years, those pictures as portraits were my mom and my dad. So what you see is a crop picture that we had to, that Judy thankfully was able to use her artistic style but, and, and get that. So today, I'm gonna to share, and if you know me, I love quotes, especially ones that inspire. My dad would call them, Claudia, words of wisdom, WOWs. And if you have touched my heart this week, and I'll start with this. Sometimes you just have to stay silent because no words can explain what is going on in your mind and in your heart. I'm sharing for myself, but especially my sweet mama and our family. Thank you to every one of you for showing up and showing your love for our mom and dad. She is overwhelmed by the thoughts and prayers for dad and appreciates the kindness, the hugs, compassion, caring words, and all the blessings that you have for her. One of her dear friends lovingly shared this quote the other day, and it fits perfectly today. There is a fine line between grief and relief. There's a fine line between grief and relief. For 60 years, but more specifically the last seven months, my mom has been strong. She's a champion, faithfully loving, protecting, comforting, and caring for our daddy holding his hands every single day and making sure he knew he was safe and she would always be there. My sister cousin Kimberly, whom our dad loved as his own also, has this wonderful friend, her name is Gail. And like many of you, shared thoughts and prayers, but this part of her message really stuck as the truth. We are all so lucky to have been raised by a generation of such special and genteel and graceful parents. Wow, it's so true. My daddy was part of the greatest generation. Dad lived a faithful and active life. He gave all of us, mom, Tommy, Paul, Greg, his six grandchildren, Madison, Emily, Lauren and Ashton, Miranda and Gunnar, and his two great grands, Evelyn and Magnolia, our spouses, Keith, Judy, Barbara, Kimberly, Claudia and Dave, all of our family and all of his friends. We made so many incredible memories with him and experiences that we will all treasure forever. He would do anything for one of us and when this season came for him, it was our turn to make sure, sure he and mom were safe, protected, well cared for, and loved. Our mom would worry about how much time we would devote to her and dad's care, and I'd simply say, there's nothing more important and nowhere else I'd rather be, nowhere else we would rather be. I'd say, mom, we don't have to be here. We get to be here. Dad and I had a routine when I walked in, and I'd say, hey, Daddy, and he'd say, hey, Sugar. And every time I said goodbye, I'd say, 
I love you, Daddy. He raised his eyes and he said, I love you. Then Tommy and I, we had a routine also because it was really important. So before we left, and I know my other brothers did this too, but this was part of our routine, we'd always say to Dad, you are safe. Mom is safe because this is what we know he needed to hear. As most of you know, my brother Tommy is our true family hero. He has selfless me and tireless me every single day, especially in these last seven years. Made sure mom and dad had nothing to worry about. He has the greatest heart and we all appreciate you so much. We also want to lift up our amazing caregivers at Highland Hills and Compassion Care who have had such special hearts as we trusted them to provide dad's needs. They have been a special part of our family. Finally, as I talk with mom, she wants you to know that on dad's last day, she was there diligently, lovingly holding his hand his beautiful eyes were open and he had a grip on her hand. That was all that mattered in the moment for mom and for dad, his wife of 60, year old, 60 years that she was there. At that point, he simply closed his eyes and peacefully went to sleep, never letting go as if he were telling her, Evelyn, I'll always be holding your hands and living in your heart. There is a fine line between grief and relief. Dad is completely well in God's hands with his family in heaven. To mom's love, our daddy, papa, uncle Tom, and friend, we all love you. We miss you and know that you will forever be in our memories and in our hearts. I love you, daddy. I also just wanted to thank the choir because I noticed the choir row up there. And I know my dad loved singing and he loved singing in this choir and his family of up here. I mean, it just was everything for him to be able to be up there. Even if he could barely walk, he wanted to be up there. So I noticed. why it hit so hard. So I'm going to speak for me and my brother here as Papa was a symbol of consistency. And as a military child who has moved every year, every two years, for basically my whole life, coming back to like driving down Honeycutt Lane and pulling up to that house and like being welcomed. about him was love and that really was what embodied Papa was that love that he always never ceased to express for us and every time we leave that visit from his house every Christmas or whenever he'd walk out with me and me holding the American flag and the Georgia flag <laughs> and no matter how hard it was for him to walk or how much of a struggle how cold it was he would hold that thing high and he would go wave it until we were out of sight. And those memories will like reside in me forever. And I miss you a lot. 
Occasionally, I'm, uh, I'm a time of tune. Okay. Um, how do you follow this up, you know? How do you follow this up? And, and, oh, okay. um, my dad was a very special man. He loved his family, his friends, and especially his church. He was always willing to give whatever he could to benefit the lives of people, known or unknown. Whether volunteering on mission trips, cooking or shopping for men's breakfast, which he really loved to, to help helping with construction, helping his ignorant son build a house. <laughs> he was always there. Dad had the ability to spoil his children rotten too. Oh boy. He, but he taught us self-reliance and how to get things done. We were not the spoiled ones. He was always there when we needed them. He let us do our thing, and he taught us well. Our first cars that were ours, now remember we drove lots of 1969 hand me but he'd call us over to Hayward Allen out of the blue, show us the car that he had picked out for us, tell us how much he had paid for deposit, and how much we had to pay per month. <laughs> In my case, it was a 1979 metallic blue Ford Fairmont four-speed. Manual shift. I hadn't even seen a manual shift car before in my life. And he told me, drive it home. It was time to learn. I sat in the car and turned the key. It jolted, but didn't start. I tried again, same result. After a few tries, there was a knock at the window. It was mother saying, push the clutch. <laughs> it started. I released the clutch to drive it home. Pop, the engine dies. <laughs> Repeat, same result. After a few more minutes, knock at the window. It's mom. Release the clutch slowly while you push the gas. Dad's watching this the whole time. <laughs> Big smile on his face. He's enjoying this. <laughs> I get it going and get on the Atlanta highway to go home. Now, if you know the Atlanta highway up near the racetrack, there's a stoplight at the hill. Going up. I got stuck there. Mom and Dad were right behind me at a safe distance <laughs> so that I wouldn't roll back into anybody. I left some serious tread marks on that highway, but I did make it home safely. But that's the way Dad was. He advised us, but allowed us to make our own decisions about things, which is the best thing to do, even if they weren't the best. If you ever heard the statement, though, how about this or that, watch out. That was a code for, you better do this and do it now. <laughs> a friend in need is a friend indeed, and that was dad to the T. I remember so many late night calls from employees or friends who needed help with an issue or problem. He'd always step up to the challenge. It was for me, it was, one of his biggest frustrations in the last few years. He wanted to be at church. He wanted to help out with things. The body just couldn't do it. And it was frustrating for him. You know, all of us and dad sometimes had our butted heads. We were, we all think and strive for independence and, and our own freedom. In some cultures, if you need guidance, you call upon the spirit of your ancestors, and then they've never left you. The wisdom and strength of a father will come to your aid. We fear that uh, in asking for guidance sometimes, though, we might give up that individuality that's us. But I've come to realize that over time, who we are is who we were. Dad will always be a part of us. His guidance and words of wisdom will lead us and guide us always. We love you, Dad.
have them have an open mic. Uh, so I don't have anything prepared. I just wanted to say that Mr. Flynn was my neighbor for probably 28, almost 30 years. Best neighbor anybody could ever ask for. He would say, um, how about this? <laughs> how about um, I do this to this fence or I clip these bushes and I said, yeah, that's fine. You do what you want to do because your yard looks like Fantasy Island. <laughs> and mine looks like not good. So he was just always so helpful, he and this plan. And I just appreciated him so much. church at the choir where y'all had to drag him away from me because we would talk <laughs> military. Um, I'm a military brat. I um, have two parents, well, I had two parents, um, Vietnam veteran Marines. Um, and I told him I wouldn't hold it against him because he was Army. <laughs> and we would laugh about that, but um, he loved his family and he loved you dearly. He spoke highly of you. Heather, he was his true love. He always spoke about you. Um, and he was a true friend. Um, anybody know him? He had jokes. <laughs> he had jokes. <laughs> and sometimes they would get, because um, I told him I'm not thin skinned, so I can take it. And he wanted to test the theory. And I said, I'm going to tell Miss Evelyn I <laughs> Because um, he was getting close to borderline jokes with now, um, so I'm going to tell Miss Evelyn, and Miss Evelyn, she said, that's your friend. I said, but it's your husband. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a wonderful person, and anybody who knew him, he always had a smile. He always had kind of words to say to somebody. You know, people lend a helping hand here today. And my buddy, I'm going to miss him. Um, it was hard for me to come up here, but I want you to know he's church for many, many years with the Flins. Um, I was looking through some old pictures last night and um, just about every hiking, camping, backpacking trip that I was on during that time, Mr. Glenn was in those pictures. Um, and just a real quick story, Mr. Glenn and I went on a week-long canoeing trip up in Minnesota and Canada. We crossed over Canada at one point. And um, it was Mr. Glenn and I were partners in the canoe for most of that time. Um, so we had a lot of fun talking. <laughs> and um, at one point he said, you know, you can call me Tom. I was like, no, I can't. <laughs> You're Craig's dad. You're always going to be Mr. Flynn. And um, I just never really could quite get past that Mr. Flynn part. Um, on that trip, it was commented later and I hadn't thought about it. But um, at the end of dinner each night, Mr. Glenn and I were always cleaning up. And when I say cleaning up, I mean we were always eating the last of the food. When everybody was done, we returned for seconds, thirds, and fourths. And um, so it was just, it was, I love Mr. Glenn. So that's all. The good news is, after the service today, you're all invited to a reception where y'all can continue to tell these wonderful stories and eat lots of food. <laughs> so at this time, I will just invite our choir for our special music. Thank you. 
just read the eulogy, and I am from Korea. And I want to thank Mr. Glenn. I never got to meet him. I'm a new choir director. But I want to thank you, thank Mr. Glenn for serving in Korea so that we could have freedom, that we could also be in the U.S. to do the awesome charity that you serve in and white work. Thank you so much. February evening, holding the hand of his beloved bride Evelyn, Thomas Latimer Glenn, child of God, passed from this life 
to the next in the arms of his loving God, fully healed and free of all limitations that bound him here on this earth. Thanks be to God. So brothers and sisters, I invite you to follow the family as they leave. Just follow them to the reception hall and uh, come have some more stories and some times of joy in the life of Tom and his family. Let us step forth in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And let the people of God say, Amen. Amen.